Battle of Franklin. In fact, I don't know that there was any Civil War battle in which um, there was weather like this, maybe Murfreesboro in December of 1862. But thanks for coming out. Um, I'm gonna have a few brief comments. My name is Eric Jacobson. I'm the CEO of the Battle of Franklin Trust. We manage Carton as well as Carter House. Once we're done with our ceremony, Gulf Homes will open to the public. Um, obviously free of charge. We have a lot of luminaries inside um, Carton as well as some of Carter House. These luminaries are meant to commemorate those who were killed, wounded, or who were captured during the Battle of Franklin. So let's begin with just a little bit about that day. Since many of you are partaking in this for the first time, I'm going to assume, though, perhaps you know a little bit about what happened here. The Battle of Franklin was fought on Wednesday, November 30th, 1864. And this really is the last major battle of a long and terrible war. Although there would be fighting after Franklin, there was nothing like what happened here to be replicated. And thankfully, um, this was, this in many ways was the end. Just a few months later, our long, terrible war came to its conclusion. But why was there a battle? In the aftermath of the fall of Atlanta, John Bell Hood, who was in command of the Confederate Army, decided to invade Middle Tennessee and try and retake Nashville, which had been lost to U.S. troops many years before. Good? All right, good. To counter Hood's movement into Middle Tennessee, John Schofield was dispatched to this area by William Tecumseh Sherman, who had captured Atlanta. Both armies numbered about 30,000 men. For the Confederacy, this was a last desperate gamble to prolong the war. For the U.S. Army and federal soldiers, it was an effort to try and end the war. For several days, there was a great amount of movement south of here from Pulaski through Columbia, and then at Spring Hill on November 29th, where the U.S. Army pulled off one of the greatest escapes of the entire war. They arrived on the outskirts of this small town before sunrise. By about noon on this date in 1864, the U.S. Army was nearly fully set up in a strong defensive position with intentions to evacuate. Their plan was to leave as soon as it was dark. John Bell Hood arrived about a mile south of where we now stand early in the afternoon and believed right or wrong, and Hood has certainly been judged in a lot of different ways through the years. Today, I think we should put all that aside. It doesn't matter about hindsight, and it doesn't much matter what any of us think. What we know is this. John Bell Hood was at the head of a Confederate army that had been fighting for nearly two and a half years, and Hood believed quite simply this was the last chance to destroy the U.S. Army and the last chance to achieve anything close to a victory. Any efforts at Southern independence were fast waiting. And at 4 o'clock that afternoon, 20,000 Southern troops, as an author wrote many years ago, marched into the pages of history. Carton became a field hospital within moments of the battle's onset. Terrible fighting began to unfold to the northwest, to the west of here, obviously focused around the Carter House, some of the worst fighting of the battle. I'm not here to relate all the details of what happened that night, but this was a short and brutal and intense struggle. Most of the heavy fighting was really over by about 7 o'clock, although the battle would have spasms that would reverberate into the darkness until well after 9. By the time the Battle of Franklin ended, there were nearly 10,000 casualties. The luminaries that you will see tonight will commemorate just some of those men, north and south, blue and gray, young and old, who came from a myriad of walks of life and found themselves here in Franklin, caught up in the worst of warfare. Of the nearly 10,000 casualties, almost three quarters of them were Southerners. Many of those who died are buried here at Carton. Many of those who were wounded that night were brought into the house behind me and cared for by the McGavocks and a handful of doctors. For those of us who do this 365 days a year, the Battle of Franklin is something that we talk about every day. And we felt that even this year, in the midst 
of everything that we have all collectively gone through, there was no way that we were not going to have this event. and we, we can be safe and I guess we can stand in the snow and be cold because everyone who was here on November 30th, 1864 has been through much worse. They endured a war that by the time it was over, if you survived it, you had been witness to nearly 700,000 deaths. In our modern world, that would be nearly seven and a half million dead. And the country, although it had stayed together, it was badly damaged. And what happened here mattered. It always mattered. In the last number of years, we've worked very hard to reclaim nearly 150 acres of the battlefield. To the north, nearly 100 acres. And now almost 30 have been saved just around Carter House in the most recent years. It's been costly, it's been timely, and it's all been worth it, even on a day like this. Although, having been through the rain of the last several years, I actually think I'd rather enjoy the snow over the pouring deluge of the last couple of years. Now, if you'll bear with us for about 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to read several hundred, just several hundred, of the nearly 10,000 Americans who were killed, who were wounded, or who were captured here on November 30th, 1864. Thank you very much. Samuel Wood, William James Fairchild, James Jones, Freeman Thamer, Samuel Dieter, Joseph Kanagy, William McShank, Eli Groves, Lewis Williams, Iris Sandler, 